Welcome everyone to tonight's Cascade Speak Easy Moon. The theme is hobbies. I'm going to quickly pass it over to our Sergeant at Arms to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Madam President. Hopefully, everyone can hear me. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. All right. I would like to now introduce our toast, excuse me, our toastmaster to make opening remarks and call for the joke of the day, review program changes, and introduce guests. And that would be Vicky. All right. Thank you all very much. I just wanted to say thank you for all the condolences and reaching out to me. I appreciate that. Um, it was sudden, but um, he went the way he always planned on. He said he would go to sleep and um, just not wake up. And that's how it happened. And the first responders told me that he did not suffer in any way. So that was how he wanted to go. And I thank you for reaching out to me. Um, okay, so we do have some program changes. I believe that Christina will not be evaluator because Kathleen is taking um, this week off and not doing her speech. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, awesome. <laughs> but it looks like everybody else is here for their roles. Looking forward to our table topics, which may be about the theme of hobbies. When I read that, I immediately went to my tax brain of what constitutes a hobby or a small business, because so many people want to deduct things because they think it's a small business, but it's actually a hobby. So that's where my brain went when I saw this. Do we have a joke of the day? Ooh. Silence. Crickets. Okay. No worries. I'm gonna okay. have one. Oh, okay. Go for it. <laughs> Yay. So this is a response joke. I hope I haven't already told this one to Toastmasters, but I am looking for responses in, in this joke. How does a cat like its meat cooked? Rare. Rare. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Before we get on to our speaking portion, I would like to hear from our general evaluator and her team about the evaluation process. So it is my pleasure to introduce our general evaluator, Pat Woodfield. Pat. Yeah. We usually do knuckles, so here, Vicki, let's just knock our knuckles together. <laughs> Well, the purpose of the general evaluator is to look at the entire experience that we share together, identify the strengths, the high points, the challenges that we've confronted and the things that we could do better. I have a wonderful team involved. So let's go down the team and let me introduce them to you. Uh, the evaluator for the first speech for Kathleen's for Selena's speech is Lloyd Smith. Lloyd. Thank you. This evening, Selena is doing the second speech in the project she began last week. It's the evaluation and feedback project from level one that's common to all of the past. If you remember last week, she gave a speech and I evaluated it. And the idea is that she is to give another speech tonight, it can be a rewritten version of that speech or a completely different speech. And then it's supposed to incorporate the feedback she got in the, from the last speech. It sounds a little complicated, but it's not. <laughs> oh, five to seven minutes, Mr. Timer. Okay, and then the next is my unfavorite job, and I always refuse to do it, is being the timer. And Eric obviously has more patience and attentiveness than I do. First, <laughs> after we practice a lot of things, one of them is timing, talking in a lot of the amount of time. Speech tonight is five to seven minutes. I will be using this timing device and these cards. For Selena, 
Her speech at five minutes will be green, six minutes will be yellow, and seven minutes will be red, and you need to wrap it up. If you're in a contest, you get 30 seconds over the red card, or you're disqualified. Table topics will be one to two minutes, same kind of situation. Green at one, yellow one and a half, red at two. We also time evaluations. Evaluations will be two to three minutes. Green at two, yellow at two and a half, red at three. I will keep track of all of our timing and give a report when called upon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we've got the grammarian, and you know the grammarian is the person who looks at all of the use of language, well done, elegance, not so elegant, interesting, intriguing, wonderful ways of describing things. And the person who's going to be doing that this evening is Claudia Walters. Thank you. As the grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers, listening carefully to their language usage. I'll take note of any misuse, misuse, like I just said, of the English language, as well as any outstanding words, quotes, or sayings, or thoughts. As grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. So because we've had some pretty crazy words of the day, I picked <laughs> something kind of in line with our theme, and so our word of the day today is leisure, which means one's discretionary time spent in non-compulsory activities, time spent away from cares and toils, often referred to as free time. Because you don't need me to define, I'm assuming, to this actual word, um, I'm going to go ahead and, or excuse me, actually give you an example. I'm going to instead give you a quote, and I'll give you extra points if you can guess who said it. To resist the social pres pressure now put on one's leisure time requires a tougher upbringing and a more obstinate willfulness, willful, I'm not, I'm screwing up, obstinate willfulness about going one's way than ever before. If I can repeat that, sorry, I kind of messed it up. You want me to repeat it? To resist the social pressure now put on one's leisure time, it requires a tougher upbringing and a more obstinate willfulness about going one's way than ever before. Basically saying, <laughs> go your own way. <laughs> Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. All right, that is it for me. Wait a minute, who oh. said it? Adolf yes. Hitler. Oh. <laughs> Go your own way, Mr. Fleetwood Mac. Oh, I'm sorry. Each speaker <laughs> is encouraged to use the word of the day, and I will give a word of the day report and grammatical usage report when called upon. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Last but not least is the odd counter. That Lola is going to be the odd counter today. She's going to catch all those little filler words that disrupt the flow of language. The purpose of the off canter is to note words and sounds that are used as a crutch or a pause by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including words such as and, well, but, so, and you know. I will also listen for filler words or filler sounds, excuse me, including o, oh, um, and er. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or a phrase such as I, I, or this means, this means. At the end of the meeting, I will repeat the number of times that each speaker uses these expressions. Before I pass the baton back to the Toastmaster, Vicki, I would like to acknowledge the return of Brian Brett to our group. Glad to see you back now. Thank you. So okay, Vicki, falls in your court. All right, thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Pat. I meant to say that because I saw him in the room. Welcome, Brian. And now I have a pseudo Toastmaster because I'm not in the room and he has the paper that has all the words. So please welcome Rob to do the introduction. Thank you for that nice introduction, Vicki. 
So in this speech is the second project in the presentation mastery pathway. In this part of the path, emphasis is on evaluation and feedback. The assignment is to deliver a speech, receive feedback, and then use that feedback in a second speech, which he is doing this evening. Since this is the second speech, <clears throat> excuse me, I will ask the evaluator to make note of improvement in the following areas. Better use of hand gestures, less reliance on notes, better eye contact and avoidance of speaking when not facing the audience. The final task of this assignment is to evaluate a speech using the evaluation techniques suggested. At first glance, Ted Robbins is an unlikely wilderness survival expert. At 78 years old and suffering from diabetes and a heart condition, Robbins would seem better suited to channel surfing his charter subscription, <laughs> basking in the Arizona sun, or tending his Peshastan table grape arbor and flower garden. Searchers are still puzzling over how Robbins managed to elude rescue for five days after he was reported missing in the wilderness of the North Cascades. This presentation is an account of a multi-agency search effort that ultimately failed in a subjective to find Robbins, who walked out of the woods under his own power. It uses Robbins' account and records of the search compiled by the Chelan County Sheriff Department to examine ways to improve wilderness search techniques. I present the mysterious case of Ted Robbins by Selena Danko. Selena Danko and her speech, The Mysterious Case of Ted Robbins. On Friday, August 20th, 78 year old Ted Robbins walked out of the North Cascades. He's holding his trekking poles, he's a little wobbly, but otherwise doing quite well for being missing for five days. It was a happy discovery for the 25 searchers who spent hundreds of hours scouring the forest trails of French Ridge looking for him. One volunteer described climbing over 60 downed logs on the quest to find Robbins. So how did a septuagenarian with diabetes and a heart condition outrun much younger, much better equipped searchers for that much time. Examining how he did what he did over those five days tells a really good story, but it will also help us in future search efforts. This is a story from Ted Robbins' point of view. His daughter was suffering from some suicidal thoughts and he was trying to help her. His mind was restless, and he's always found solace in the woods when his mind was restless. He was unable to sleep, and he had heard that the huckleberries were in prime condition in the high country. So he packed his five-gallon bucket and some smaller buckets to load the, load the huckleberries into the big bucket, and he planned to go to the top of French Ridge to gather huckleberries. It was a nine mile trip in and a nine mile trip out, doable for a one day hike. He thought. He left a detailed note for his wife and a map saying exactly where he was going to be. He slipped out of the house at 2.30 in the morning without telling him <laughs> where he was going. He just left the note and the map. He got to the trailhead at Black Pine at 3.30 in the morning, where he was able to sleep for a couple of hours. He left the trailhead at 5.30 in the morning after filling out the trailhead log, and he left a map in his car. In his pack is a lengthy list that proved to be his survival kit for five days. So think about what you would want in your pack if you were going to be lost in the woods for five days. He had a five gallon bucket, little buckets. He had a jungle first aid kit that he purchased at a yard sale. And two pairs of scissors, yellow bandages, 
some liquid band-aids that he used a lot. That was probably the only thing he used in his first aid kit. He had a knife and some paracord. He had a fly pole and flies. He had his trekking poles that weigh about a pound each. He did not pack light. He had insect repellent. He used all of that the first day. <laughs> Listerine strips, fisherman friend lozenges, two Ricola cough drops, a flashlight, bear spray, his phone, a can of Sterno, a rain jacket, and a buckskin coat. He was wearing denim pants, a t-shirt, and a Marson and Marson baseball cap. If you look at his kit, you can think about the puzzle the Apollo 13 astronauts had when they had to develop a CO2, CO2 scrubber to get back to planet Earth. Using their kit and his kit for those two problems was about the same amount of puzzle. Mm -hmm. So Robbins is a stubborn man and a few people know that about him. Others think that he's an old man and he can't go that far. Who was right? Robbins is determined to collect five gallons of popularities. He doesn't care that there are 60 blowdowns in the way. He doesn't care if he can't see the trail anymore. He certainly knows where he's going. And he finally realizes at about midnight on Sunday night that he's lost. We know from research of lost person behavior that most people who are lost go downhill. Robbins decides instead that he's going to go uphill so he can see the vistas and figure out where he is. It's cold at night, it's lower 40s. And he's trying to think, well, how am I going to stay warm? He has these two jackets. So he puts them on. A buckskin and a rain jacket. And this is the routine that he will do every night. And he spends a lot of nights. He spends about 60% of his time sleeping. Only the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Breathes into his shirt to stay warm. In the morning, every morning, he has a specific routine to get going because remember, he's 78 years old. Yoga. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time gunning for that ridge top so he can see the vistas below. He's surviving on berries alternating with Listerine strips. Mm because they help with sore mouth from the acidity of the berries. He grapples with dry mouth by recycling his own urine. Oh. Monday night, he sees his first rescue helicopter, but it's six miles away. Meanwhile, a hasty search is assembled, but it's quickly abandoned when the searchers decide there's no way a 78-year-old man is going to make it this far. Robbins, meanwhile, in a weakened condition with no meds for his diabetes, finds himself sleeping on a sway backed tree that he ties himself to with paracord. Eventually, he uses that paracord for suspenders because he loses 14 pounds. <laughs> he uses that paracord to retrieve a knife on a hill because he's worried about falling down. By Wednesday, it's no longer a search for the life, Ted Robbins, and it's now recovery. Mm -hmm. But Robbins is forging on. He makes his way to the creek. He catches eight fish, throws two of them back because they're not big enough. <laughs> he cooks the rest of them. He eats two without cleaning them. The second to be cleans because it wasn't really good that <laughs> way. And he saves two for the hike out. He hikes out Friday. A little weekend, but in pretty good shape, found by a couple of recreational hikers, carried to it by an ambulance to Cascade Medical Center where he recovers after three days of visiting there. So what we learned is to increase our search area on that first day, don't under underestimate the 70 or eight year old, look really, really hard for those notes. We, the searchers did not know about his detailed note that he left, left with his wife at home. They did not find the map in his car. Mm -hmm. 
So thoroughly investigate and make sure you really understand the capabilities of the individual you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Timer, may we have a minute, please? One minute. Thank you very much. As you're finishing up your thoughts, it is my pleasure to introduce our Table Topics Master. And I know he's got some hobbies and you might talk about those. Please help me welcome Steve. Yay, Steve. Thank you. I do have a couple of leisure time activities. And it only makes a lot of sense to me that <clears throat> do them as much as possible. Every now and then I interject a little work just to break the cycle up a bit. <laughs> Brian, I'm gonna start with you first break your right in. <laughs> I thought about at the fire hall, you guys got a daunting task when the bell rings hopping in the truck and going out and battling big flames. I know you have a lot of downtime there. Can you tell us about the definition of hobbies that your men pursue in their many hours waiting for the fire alarm? Thank you, Steve. Good evening, Toastmasters. Certainly nice to be back. I have missed you all. I learned a great deal being here and it has helped me a ton throughout my career. So I'm glad to be back. Downtime at the fire station. The crews are busy all day long. We don't just fight fires. We have to be emergency medical technicians. We have to know how to cut people out of automobiles. We have to know how to do hazardous materials. We have to know how to do rope rescues, water rescues, confined space rescues. So the training never stops and that's scheduled all day long. Between the two districts, we respond to 4,500 calls a year. The evenings are often busy and hopping. We always pray for downtime for two reasons. One, nothing bad has happened to someone. And two, we get to sleep and get paid for it. <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> the hobbies of the firefighters, we tend to do a lot of this. We have a lot of similarities, hiking, hunting, fishing, Sports activities are pretty popular amongst us. However, I just find that the fall is when everybody likes to get out into the woods because during the summer, we're busy in the brush fires and the forest fires and we move around the region. We don't just fight fires here locally. We're deployed around the state, out of state, often to California in the winter. This time of year, once we have a weather changing event like we basically did last weekend, everybody gets to relax. I know I got to drink beer for the first time in about three months last weekend. It was wonderful. I had no apprehensions at all. It happened to be my birthday as well. Hobby, I guess, would be drinking beer in my downtime. <laughs> One hobby. And I look forward to going fishing, which happened to be going to Conconelli this weekend and staying in one of the little cabins at the state park. If you've never done it, I highly recommend it. This will be our second time. Thank you. Yay. Well, uh, Mr. B. 
Ron, do you think hobbies are allowed in the Soviet Union? <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful question, Mr. <laughs> Table Topics Master. I don't have any firsthand knowledge of hobbies in the Soviet Union, but I think that everyone throughout the world should have a hobby. If you don't have a hobby, you don't have a way to get away from the daily grind of your daily job. I did know a Russian fellow once, and I spent a number of times with his family at dinner. There was more vodka than food at the table. The thing that they really like to do is they like to drive fast, fancy cars. They don't really care about having a great big home and fancy clothes. They like to have fancy cars. That kind of sets them up on a pedestal as being successful, at least in their eyes. I don't know if that's really a hobby. It's the only thing we know about Russians. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> other, than, other than they like to drink vodka and drive fast cars. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> David. <laughs> All right. As Rob said, hobbies are something we do for a little downtime, decompressing entertainment. Christina, do you feel that your hobbies could eventually or potentially become a business, something you do to garner an income? Do you think that has a good or a bad effect on your hobbies? I have to think about what my hobbies are to figure that out. My sister and I used to like to go rollerblading. I don't think I could turn that into much of anything <laughs> other than a disaster, which did happen. So I guess I could have gone into nursing as a result to help my sister, but we gave up the sport instead. I do enjoy alcohol ink art, if you're familiar with that. If not, you can Google it, it's pretty fun. It's an inexpensive hobby that creates amazing art on generally a plastic substrate rather than paper. It can be done on canvas as well. I have been thinking I might be able to turn some of those art things into jewelry, however. So I've got that going around in my head. I may actually be able to turn that into a lucrative project. I would need to enlist the services of my craft sister because I'm not a real crafty person. I think she could put things together better. Would be a family project that way. I'll keep you posted on how that goes. Thank you, Mr. Tulipop. Somewhere in the course of time, thank you, Christina. Well, well spoken. I've, I've heard people say, what do you do in your pastime? What leisure activity do you participate in? And I'd like to think more often than not, it's a tongue in cheek response to say, a good nap. Lloyd, does that ring a bell? <laughs> Thank you, Steve. The answer is yes. <laughs> Since I'm retired, I'm one of the people who can actually do that whenever I feel like it. And tough luck for the rest of you. you. You guys may live to be retired. You know, medical science is making advances all the time. Who knows? 
I've been, I was thinking about this question of hobbies. So since I'm retired, you know, nearly anything is a, could be considered a hobby, I guess. But I found myself lately spending a lot of time doing what I used to consider work. What I mean by that is that I live in a, a 55 and older condo development. There are a bunch of people who are a lot older than 55, older than me even, believe it or not. And a lot of them are people who are distinctly unhandy. And so they end up having to hire handymen to do what I think are pretty simple little jobs, things like replacing the lock set on the door or making their toilet actually flush and that sort of thing. And I didn't realize how many of those people get ripped off. Uh, that's apparently ripping off older people as a growth industry. <laughs> you know, when you hear somebody say they spent 200 bucks getting somebody to, uh, I'm not sure how to describe it, but get their closet doors to slide back and forth because they came out of those little track guide things. And I think, what the hell, you know? So anyway, <laughs> as people found out that I can do this kind of stuff, more and more people want me to do this kind of stuff. Which is okay. I just assume not see some of these people get robbed because they don't really have the money to be robbed of. And so that tends to consume a lot of my time. I don't think that answered the question, but I can't remember what it was. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we find out that your phone number has changed, we'll know that you've become too high in now. <laughs> Fabiola, can you tell us what your hobby is? And what it is that drew you to it or them, if it's more than one? Right now, it's outdoors. I love spending my time outdoors ever since we went into COVID and the gyms closed. Um, my alternative was to go out and go hiking. So for me, it's been going hiking, going biking. Um, I also joined now the new um, the, the polar bear plungers. Oh. So now I joined, I joined that group and I started that in, I believe, November, December. And I have a best friend that talks me into doing everything. And I always tell, when we were in the water, I remember we went to Lincoln Rock Park, and I swear the water was like 25 degrees. And I kept looking at her saying, I better be your best friend ever because this is crazy. And we were in the water for 45 minutes. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, so I will say that my, uh, my hobbies have been uh, lately enjoying the outdoors and letting my best friend talk me into crazy little things like that. <laughs> Sounds like your your uh, hobby was coerced. <laughs> well, I'm told four five minutes is like a plunge. <laughs> I, I find that you know, it it takes someone with a gun to get me into a into the gym. <laughs> Not sure why, with this wonderful place that we call home, that you would go indoors. Who knows what a hobby horse is? It's a broomstick with the horse's head attached to it. Kathleen, when you were a kid, did you or your friends have one or more of them and did it get fought over? Thank you. That is an excellent question. Always fun to go back into my childhood. <laughs> I did not have a hobby horse that you described. I had this fabulous horse, though, that had springs on each of its, what do you call them, legs? Limbs. And you could sit on it and bounce, 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 bounce. <laughs> that was a great toy. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I developed other hobbies. I would say though, I really am not a hobby person. I don't understand that line between doing work and how it becomes a hobby and leisure because everything has a product. My quilter friends are producing quilts and 
seamstress friends are producing dresses and people with these hobbies are always producing something. It looks a lot like work to me. The closest thing I've ever had to a hobby is maybe cooking. I took a lot of cooking classes when I was younger. Thai cooking classes. That's all awesome. I'm going to be doing sometime. Italian cooking classes. I took all types of cooking classes and I did a lot of cooking and acquired a lot of equipment. That was probably the closest thing to a hobby. <laughs> I did try picking up once. I got the deck of cards, but none of us understood the instructions. That was the end of that. Now, my favorite hobby is Toastmasters. <laughs> Some time back, I found it enjoyable to look up a definition of our words that constitute the theme of the night. So I did. I went and looked up hobby. And the definition was an activity done regularly in one's leisure time for pleasure. Mm -hmm. How often do you do your hobby for pleasure and for how long, Eric? Thank you, Steve. I'm an unusual person. I see the world as puzzles, and I have this tremendous curiosity. So anything is a hobby. Even work was a hobby. What puzzles am I going to solve today? What's going to happen today? What is going to be the challenge of the day? So everything is a, everything's a hobby. The internet's a hobby. I got a new cell phone. That's a hobby. Before I left Lewis, I always enjoyed quotes and just kind of the economy of words, poetry, those kinds of things. So I dabbled with that. And I would read quote books and say, you know, that's interesting. But this is how it applies to my life. And I'm creating a different quote. I took a poetry class a couple, three years ago in college and learned a whole different world out there and it was a lot of fun and, and didn't know that so i just take things and turn them into hobbies and even though it looks like work for some people it's just mental stimulation for me so i'm lucky that way you know there you go. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun to see how long it took. <laughs> it's a little past time on leader activity. <laughs> Is your hobby, Barbara, a fine pastime that you just enjoy from time to time, or do you ever find that it's an obsession? Amazing question. <laughs> Does my hobby constitute as an obsession? I've done no, it doesn't. I am like you, Kathleen. I'll dabble in a few things here and there until it looks like work and becomes not leisurely. It'll become it's not a hobby anymore. It's not any more fun. So my hobby going back to what i like to do is hike that is my hobby but i don't do it as frequently as the definition states but where i moved now and live we have quite the wildlife and so i have taken a, a new hobby until it becomes work is now i am learning how to call elk <laughs> <laughs> I have two that I've called to my property. So I, I guess I'm not so terrible at it. It has been quite the enjoyment to um, dabble into elk calling 
bowing down on the other end, just out calling at this point. Thank you for that question. It's not an obsession. <laughs> <laughs> is that like Roger the Elf? Hey, Roger! And I'm sorry, there's no spikes here. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> I'm curious. I've never been certain. Does elf calling work primarily during the rut, or is it a year-round activity? I just moved there. I just called two of them. I don't. I have no idea. Okay. Are you going to demonstrate? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to think about that, you know, because it's kind of about the you know right around hunting season and not action starts. Pat, did I get you? Well, let's see what's on the list. <laughs> Have you pursued a particular leisure time activity or have you found that your Hobbies have evolved over the course of time. Do you fall back on one or another? Actually, my greatest hobby is treasure hunting. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean I love thrift shops, I love yard sales, and I love getting fantastic bargains. And I have been doing it for more years than I can count anymore. I kind of stumbled into it because I came from a family where nice people didn't go to thrift shops <laughs> until I found out that there were treasures in thrift shops. Were you to visit my home, you might be surprised to notice that I only have two pieces of furniture that I have ever bought made. Every piece of furniture in my home came from a thrift shop, shop or a yard sale. And most people think my home is nicely decorated because, well, one thing is my father began his career in retail as a furniture salesman. So we always had nice furniture and I know good furniture when I see it. So that's helpful. The best bargain I ever got was a set of dishes by a potter from Mexico named Ken Edwards. Now, Ken Edwards doesn't sound like a Mexican name, but his pottery comes out of a market in Chilapi Papi near Guadalajara. And I've owned a set before, but unfortunately, it was when my daughter was a teenager and she did the dishes. So, well, what can I say about that? You can just imagine. However, I went to the Goodwill in East Wenatchee about two years ago. And I saw a set of Ken Edwards dishes. Now they're dishes that are pottery with unusual painted designs, very kind of folksy. And there were dinner plates, cups, coffee cups, tea cups, serving dish, a bowl, and it was all for $9.99 and I couldn't resist it. So I bought it even though I didn't need the dishes because I thought they would be great for the patio. Got home checked out on a website where I used to find the prices of things and found out that I had bought $546 worth of Ken Edwards pottery for $9.99. Thank you. <laughs> I can't remember if I asked this question, but I'm gonna ask it again if I did, because I, I like it. How do you feel about having a hobby for mental health? Is a hobby something you do simply to while away some time, or do you find that your hobby actually helps to decompress, Vicki? Thank you very much. It depends on the hobby. I have been crafting with a friend. We get together every Sunday and we do crafts. However, I have found that sometimes it causes more stress than relaxation because I want things to line up just right because I'm just one of those types of people that if it, the angles aren't right, it just doesn't look good to me. So sometimes we laugh and you know say, this is supposed to be relaxing and it's not. Um, but I do know that one of my hobbies of swimming is a great mental health activity because once I get in the water and I just start swimming, I can just think of things and just not have a worry in the world and just have that time 
to decompress and know that I'm in my element of water that I love. And that's just something that I love to do. So if I have to really de-stress as a hobby, that would be my go-to of swimming. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Barking out there. Oh, take it out. I, I, I think it's interesting. Personally, I have a variety of hobbies that I pursue. And as many of you know, if not all of you, that art has been actually a lifelong thing. And it is an obsession for me. I love to pursue it and I hope everyone finds something that becomes their all-inclusive good activity it's an amazing mental health thing as a matter of fact in addition to the opportunity to be creative with that a rousing table talk session has come to an end table topic session I will now give it back to our coach master Victoria all right thank you very much right on time we're on schedule i will now be calling up our general evaluator to talk to us about the meeting as a whole but first calling up our team pat hey i'm going to call on my team first before i give you my evaluation so we'll start there Lord Smith. thank you pat this was the second speech of a two-speech cycle. Most of you were here last week when Selena did her speech on Apple, which was very good. It had some issues, but very good speech. I like this speech a lot, Selena. Uh, this is a classic example of making a speech out of something that's extremely familiar to you, but very unfamiliar to most of the rest of us. And I thought you did a really good job of explaining how it works is what it amounts to. Uh, the message I got from it is probably not the one you intended. I think that guy Ted Robbins needs to have a uh, tracking voice. <laughs> uh, but in any event, <laughs> uh, it was a really good speech concept. Uh, you said you were going to talk about it from the point of view of Robbins and the rescuers. I think he got in time trouble and that stopped the second half of it from happening. But the first part was pretty darn good, I thought. A second thing you were good at, now I, I, I've got to qualify this, you were good at using notes. What I mean by that is that you had a hell of a lot. You had probably what, a dozen, 15 note cards, some, something close to that. And you were good at handling them, but there were way too many of them. I, that's something you really need to work on. I don't think you needed most of them. I think you knew the speech well enough without them. But notes are kind of a you know, like a uh, kind of crutch sort of, uh, kind of like a little fuzzy animal to hang on to, you know, a stuffed bear or something like that. Your gestures and movements were much better this week than they were last week. Last week, you spent most of the speech with your hands flush. You didn't do that, so that, that was good. What should you work on? Reliance on notes, as I just said. You also got into the habit, of, you started doing like this, rocking back and forth, and you spent most of the speech doing that. I don't know whether you knew that or not. It's probably just a nervous thing. Uh, time management, obviously, once again. Uh, that'll, those, all three of these things will come with practice. They're, they're relatively minor issues. They seem major when you hear them, but they, they're not. The hard part is coming up with a good speech, structuring it well, and like that. And you, you've got a really good handle on that. So to challenge yourself, get more speeches because you've got relatively minor mechanical issues to deal with it. But I like this speech a lot. Thank you very much. Now we'll hear from Eric Stepper who will give us how we did with or against what. Yay. Penny, so in your speech was 15 minutes. No, seven fifty eight. <laughs> <laughs> Close, seven thirty is so that was good. Evaluation board two thirty two. The rest of us were in time with table topics. Christina, you had one forty one. Lloyd, you had one fifty two. Rob, one twenty. 
Fabiola 108, Hyatt 116, Brian 207, Barbara 120, Kathleen 148, Pat 222, Vicky 102. I thought you were going to have one seat at the end. It was only 36 seconds. But that's my report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Barbara, Barbara Marion, tell us how we respected, disrespected, or had mutual experiences with language. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think I failed at my job tonight. I was enjoying listening to everybody's speeches. I did not come, I did not, I did not have anything um, to say about improper use of words. There was some excellent use. Selena, you were really, I just love your play on words uh, when you're giving your speeches. Mind was restless, forging on. Um, my favorite, don't underestimate a 70, 70 year old. Well, my takeaway was he needs to carry more water. <laughs> right, I like your use of we pray for downtime. I imagine you guys do. I imagine you don't have experience a lot, especially this last year. Um, Rob, I liked your getting away from the daily grind of your daily job, because that's exactly what leisure time should be. Um, Kathleen, I, I picked up on this, just producing things that look like work to me, <laughs> because I think I can relate. That's what I really picked up on. Um, and Lloyd, I, I just want to say I appreciate your sense of humor that you bring to the table topics. And um, also, I really enjoy listening to your um, reviews of speeches because it's it's actually lessening the fear of me to give my first one because you have this great ability to give great feedback and then it's not, it's not, what's the word I'm trying to think of? It's just, it's, it's very, um, yeah, it's, yeah. Anyways, it's really you do, you do an excellent job with your feedback. I always appreciate what I'm listening, and I learn myself um, from your feedback and what I will do because I also tend to step around a lot on the speeches as well. Word of the day? I guess it was too easy. I'm gonna have to pick a harder one next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fabiola, would you come and share with us? All the fillers or none of the fillers that we use. Our word of the evening should have been soap. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five of us use that. And the word and. So one, two, three, four, another five of us use that. Um, Rob, I heard you use and twice. Uh, Selena, you repeated um, a phrase once and Barbara, you use um, so twice and but once. Pat, you used well twice and so twice and and twice. Christina, you use so twice. Lloyd, you use but twice and and once. Kathleen, you use but once. Eric, you used three times the word so. Vicki, you used so twice and four times the word and. Uh, Steve, you used the word well once and cuz. Uh, and myself, I used um three times and and twice. <laughs> okay. What about the meeting as a whole? Today was a gray, dreary, depressing day after the lovely, beautiful weather we recently had. And the whole spree of this meeting was very lighthearted, very humorous, lots and lots and lots of humor. Uh, Steve said, every now and then I interrupt it with a little bit of work. <laughs> uh, Brian said, we get to sleep and get paid for it. I mean, I think of all the things that we laughed about. The hobbies that people had. Oh, and Eric said, I see the world as a hobby. Some of the hobbies were absolutely fascinating. Calling elk. <laughs> elk. That's got to be the, the most unique, and I have to think about that one for a long time. You're all welcome to that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and, and people's descriptions of their hobbies and how they 
infused energy and humor and delight into it. I think that was very important. It was really nice to have that experience this evening. For me, it was a very, very stressful day. It was the first day of class at the college, and I am struggling with uh, the computers. You know, if, you, if any of you have ever taught, the dynamic of interacting with human beings is quite different from interacting with human beings and also having human beings up on the screen and trying to keep the equipment going while you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So this really brightened my day. I really appreciate it. And Selena's speech, I really liked the way that she used a story to illustrate a very important safety concept. As, as Lloyd said, it would have been nice if you'd had enough time then to, to do the last part of it. But as far as the meeting was concerned, what a lovely evening. So nice to come and have it be so enjoyable and flow. That's the other thing. It flowed. It really flowed. So that's all I have to say about that. And you know whose quote that is, don't you? <laughs> don't you can see me after the class. All right. I would like then to turn the meeting over to our president, Barbara, to share the words of wisdom. Well, my words of wisdom are going to be passing on to our vice president of education for any announcements. Rob? Well, thank you, Madam President. First, I would like to ask the quote that you gave earlier this evening. Who was that by? It was by, so I have it somewhere, uh, Robert Graves. So I'm surprised he did. Yeah. I think Eric knew that. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> we had just a few minutes. Brian, I would like you to come up and tell us about what you told me at City Council, an opportunity for our Toastmasters to be involved with the fire department. Thank you. Specifically fireworks or any what We were talking about evaluations. You're going to have the fire speech. department. The fire department, yes. Or the fire department. The fire department has a promotional process coming up. It may take three days. Two days of that would be for the captain's exam because there are more captain candidates than the battalion chief, which would be the next exam. There's four segments of the test. There's a written test, tactics, scenarios, a presentation, and an interview. The Toastmasters, we've used the Toastmasters in the past, and that has been the greatest thing we have ever done in evaluating the presentations, because the Toastmasters know how to evaluate presentations. It doesn't matter if you do not know the topic. For example, the captains are going to be assessing the Forest Ridge subdivision up in the school chuck and trying to determine a good lookout location for us. I can't find one. That's why I assigned it to this. They're very motivated to find lookout locations. So they're going to explain to the panel what consists of a good lookout, what qualities does a good lookout have, and then articulate these locations of a lookout. The battalion chiefs are doing a pre-fire plan on the new Marriott residence in and off of Walla Walla Street. So you will learn all about fire protection features and how we deal with fires in the built environment in the in a hotel, stand pipes, rated stairwells, sprinkler systems, and how we would tactically deal with the problem there. We would really appreciate your support. We pay fifty dollars an hour to do it. We'll take if we buy you lunch while you're there and beverages and dinner of your choosing upon conclusion. Please consider it. Do we have a date when this is all going to happen, Brian? Yes. And you it's, can send me an email if you don't have that off the top of your head. Yeah. It's the first week is the third and fourth is the firefighters one, and that was what I was working on today. It's the number 16, 17, 18. 16, 17, and 18. That is it. Yeah. 16, 17, and 18, yeah. yes. I just I haven't corresponded further because I'm trying to narrow it down. We might be able to do it in two days. 
All I need is consistency. If the captain's exam takes two days, I need the same evaluators for those two days. The next day is the battalion chief, and it could be three completely different people. I just need consistency for that. I believe that this Toastmasters Club could accommodate that. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to speak for everyone in the room. But just the weekend, or is that this Monday? It's in the middle of the week. November. Oh, sorry. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yes. Tuesday, Wednesday. All day. All day. All day. That's the difficult portion. It's yeah. <laughs> Brian, you're looking for approximately how many people to to do that? Three, three per day. Three per day. Okay. Christine and I are doing. If my Tuesday schedule works for you, it does. Okay. Yes. I just I need one more person for Tuesday. I believe Pat is available for the battalion chief exam on the 18th. I need two more people for Thursday. One for Tuesday, Wednesday, two for Thursday. I can do the uh, Thursday one. One, two. And this is during work hours. Work hours. Come in. Three. Yeah. Which one? Whatever you need. Perfect. We'll loop it together with an email. Then. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. So I'm still minus, so I, I'm still minus a personal character. You have all three days? I can do all three days. Okay. Fantastic. If anybody can be an alternate in case someone gets sick, that would be wonderful too. Thank you. Good call. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you, Vice President of Education. Anybody else? Any other announcements? I was the uh, uh, Christina Eric and I did the, it was the Italian Chiefs for the Douglas County side a while back. It's an extremely interesting process, and you don't have to have any expertise. It's okay. the responsibility of the, the guys being interviewed to or uh, doing the presentations to make it clear. Now, you know, we don't, in fact, it's probably better if you don't have expertise because then you're sick of stuff. But it's very, very interesting. Madam President, just uh, let everybody know next week we have two speakers. We have Kathleen doing a very <laughs> lengthy speech. Bring the no <laughs> And Fabiola will be doing her icebreaker. So yeah. you will definitely want to be in attendance next week. All right. So it's past time. I better just go ahead and close the meeting at. 33. Thank you. Thank you.